Hello everyone, welcome back to Introduction to Quantum Computing. We've already spoken about classical computing and the history of quantum computing, where quantum computing came from, um, why it came about, and hinted at the idea that quantum computers could provide a speed up over classical computers. And then the inevitable question would be, why is that? So what is, is it about quantum computer that gives it this advantage over classical computers. Now, if you go and you read the you know, science magazines, you'll hear things about coherence or uh, parallelism or entanglement, or heaven forbid, many worlds, as the source of power of a quantum computer. Uh, these aren't right, and well, they're not wrong. The point is that you need to know a little bit more about the details before you can evaluate such a claim. This is what we're going to learn in, throughout the subject, but I want to at least give you a taste of the idea for why some kinds of information are different than other kinds of information. So we're going to see our first information theoretic game, and the players will in the game will uh, either have one type of information available to them or another and they'll be able to solve a problem with one type of information that they couldn't solve with another type of information. Okay, let's get started. Alright, so uh, imagine we have a bunch of players. Here they all are. Uh, and let's say there's n players. How does this game work? They're each given a piece of information. Okay, and let's make the promise that 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 each of these, so any i sub j, is an integer. Okay, so player one might be given the number five. Play two, two, and the nth player might be given seven. And the task of these players is to find out whether the sum of all of these these pieces of information, the sum of all these numbers, is even or odd. And we can kind of rephrase things in the computer science language. So we can say that if it's even, then then they're just given a zero, and if it's odd, they're given a one. So we can think about the whole thing happening in terms of bits, single bits. Uh, so then the first player is allowed to tell the second player one bit of information, and the second player can tell the third player, and so on and so forth, and the last player can report one bit of information. Now they win the game, if that last player gives the parity of all of the bits that they were given. Um, so that's just saying that the, the last player, uh, the, all of the players win if the last player re correctly reports whether or not the sum of those uh, integers is even or odd, or you know, if there's a uh, an even or odd number of ones in the bits that they're given. Okay, so again, player one might be given one, player two, one, player three, zero, and so on and so forth. And the final player has to report the number of ones. Uh, so they just need to say whether or not there was an even or odd number of ones. So they can do that with one bit of information, uh, uh, zero or one. So uh, this seems like it might be difficult, right? So uh, how could, you know, if I'm the last player, uh, how could I know anything about all of what all of the other players have seen if the player before me can only give me one bit? Of course, when you think about it, it's not too difficult to come up with a strategy. And so a strategy is just something that uh, specifies what uh, an arbitrary player in the game would do. And what that player should do is take the bit that they were given, 
and add it to their piece, their bit that uh, the piece of information that they were given uh, from the referee in the game. So here we are, say, player two receives zero from player one, and from the referee they were given one. So what they should say is zero plus one, right? So they're just going to report the parity of the bit that they were given and the bit that they received from the referee. And you can see that if we do the math and ask, okay, well, what does the final player say? Well, they're going to say, they're going to give their piece of information and add the previous person's information. Okay, uh, but of course this is that person's information plus the one before them. But of course that is the information that they were given. Uh, and the one and so on and so forth until eventually we get to the last person who didn't have someone before them giving them information they just received a bit from the referee and that was player one so you know looking at all this put together we have indeed exactly what we're looking for that we're just taking the parity of all of these bits from the referee and you can see that the individual bits that were given kind of disappear from the calculation so uh, green check mark you can do this all right so let's make it a little bit harder same setup better players And this time, they're each given a real number, so pi uh, 2.5, uh, the square root of 2. These are all real numbers, so they could have a finite number of decimals or an infinite number of decimals. And we'll have to make it tractable, so we'll have the same promise that when I uh, sum up all of these numbers I'm going to get some integer okay so um, easy way to to make this work out is say the second half of the numbers uh, are just the minus of the first half and one of them has an extra integer added to it. Okay, so R1 might be pi, R2 might be minus pi. So it's not so difficult to see how this could be achieved. But under this constraint that each player can only provide a bit of information to the next player, we see almost immediately that they can't solve the problem, right? So the, the win condition hasn't changed. It's that uh, they win when the last player's bit is um, the sum of all these numbers mod 2, so it their bit is one if it's even uh, odd and, and zero if it's even, and this is not possible. So it, almost immediately, so the first player is given a real number. Maybe they're given the number pi, but they have to report to the next player zero or one. So this is impossible. However, it can be done 
if we allow the players to pass on something that's more than a bit. And we're going to allow them to pass on a quantum bit, uh, but we can actually see how this might work with something that is, is easier to draw and, and uh, something that is a little bit closer to our intuition, and that is that each player is allowed to, uh, or the players hold a disc, and each player is allowed to give the disc to the next player. So each player has, uh, let's give it a different color. This is going to work. So each player has a disc. And yeah, put some axes on that disc. And they can take that disc and they can pass it to the next player. So if they're smart, they can put like a little mark on the, on the disc and so that they can have some sort of orientation as they pass it along the chain. Now, how can they win? Well, they can win by rotating the disc and passing it to the next person. So what player one is going to do is from zero rotation, they're going to rotate it by the number they received times 180 degrees. Okay. So they'll do that and pass it on to player two. Now, player two has received this rotated disc, so their zero degrees is now R1 times 180 degrees, and what they're going to do with the disc, so they receive, oh, they receive R2, And there's zero degrees, and then there's R1 times 180 degrees. And then they're going to rotate it again to some new angle, which th this, this angle that they rotate it is going to be R2 times 180 degrees. And you can see that uh, the total angle that has been rotated is R1 times R2, times 180 degrees. Okay, so, so on and so forth, down the chain, and we can see that uh, the disc has now been rotated, by the time we get to the end, uh, R and um, R, this angle, degrees, times this angle, or n minus one, and all the way back to the beginning. Okay, so all of these uh, rotations have been applied to the disk, and we were promised that the sum of the rotations was either an even or an odd number. Okay, so we know that either there's a, an even number of 100, an even number times 180 degree rotations, or an odd number times 180 degree rotations. And well, I'm sitting on the swivel chair, so I, I could easily figure out what's going to happen, but if I rotate my disk, and I rotate it an even number of times, 180, I'm always going to end up at something equivalent to zero degrees. And if it was an odd number of times, what would happen is I would have stopped at a 180 degree rotation. Okay, so these two things are perfectly distinguishable. So if instead of 
having to communicate with bits, they were given this disk. And the last player can still be required only to communicate a single bit because there's only two options for what's going to happen to this disk. Either it's going to be rotated not at all or 180 degrees depending on whether the sum of these numbers that they're given is even or odd. So they can still just report a bit. That would be fine, uh, a fine uh, restriction on, on the players and they could still win the game provided that they were given this extra resource which is the disk. Now, last time we talked about analog versus quantum computation. So uh, an analog device is not robust to errors. So if when we're passing this disk along, there's some, uh, you know, some fumbling going on so that you don't see a perfect rotation. I mean, it's difficult to rotate a, a disk by the square root of two times 180 degrees. So what might happen at the end is the the total rotation might be somewhere in between and the player will have to take guess or it might be pointed towards the wrong direction altogether, in which case they'd be wrong. Now if this were a quantum bit of information, so if this were quantum information that would be used by a quantum computer for example, then it could be error corrected and we can ensure that the final state of this quantum information is one of two possibilities so that when the last player looks at their quantum information they can report the correct answer. Okay so you can see that uh, there's this task which if we were using classical data just is impossible almost right out of the gate whereas if we are given a new type of information then we could actually achieve the task. And we'll see lots of examples of this in the subject where if we're given this quantum information as a resource, then we can solve problems that we cannot solve with classical information.